Yo, what's cracking mates? I wanna show you what I've been working on for the last few weeks. Finally, I'm able to remove undesired aspects of the geometry culling pipeline, which makes it possible to record nice out-of-bounds videos and explain some of the weird behavior of WoW. This video is structured into two parts. The first one shows a smooth pan over the instanced area of Kerosen in full screen with some commentary in the hacked client. And the second one is a split screen view of the same clip, which compares it with the recording of the very same camera movement, but on an unmodified client. The path we are currently on already leads us to the first thing I want to explain. This is where the infamous skip to the end boss takes place, and as you can see, the reason this skip works in the first place is now visible. The nether sphere at the very end is in reality just a big as ball, which hovers ever so slightly over the ground in Deadwind Pass. And this is pretty much true for nearly all other rooms of the castle as well. You're probably asking yourself why an instance has been built in this weird and crooked way in the first place. Well, I can't answer that with absolute certainty, but here is my best guesstimate. The kerosen rate has been released with TBC, but work on it has started way sooner. Actually, it was intended to be released in vanilla, and if I'm not completely mistaken, it might have been one of the very first dungeons Blizzard ever designed. Maybe even THE first one. A remnant of this can be seen here. When Blizzard started to work on the raid, they took a snapshot of the surrounding area, and it just so happens to contain parts of a very early, bare-bones version of Soul Group. All in all, the wonkiness of Kerosene can probably simply be attributed to the inexperience of the developers, which had to test the waters and try what works out and what doesn't. As a little side note, I'll be doing a series of videos showing those no color videos for all instances of Classic, TBC and the Watlog, as well as interesting overworld locations. And as a little side note to the little side note, Kerosene went through quite some different iterations, and they used to look vastly different at times. So I'll not only spam you with videos about Kerosene, but also videos of different versions of Kerosene. I guess at this point I probably should just consider renaming my channel to All Things Kerosene. Joke aside, one of the other things on my to-do list is trying to increase the rendering performance of the client by patching it to use more modern instructions for matrix multiplications, which simply haven't been available back in the day. My next video is going to be a tutorial on how to do function hooking and how I was able to document every CVAR in the game with extreme detail. If you're into programming and game hacking, this one is certainly for you, so keep an eye for it. By the way, in case you still watch this video and don't know what culling is, here is a short explanation. In essence, it's a technique used to cut down a workload. Here in our case, render culling removes all objects from the drawing queue, which can be seen anyway. And usually, this is super smart and beneficial since there isn't really any sense in drawing objects which will be overdrawn with other objects that occlude them. The problem in the unmodified client is that there isn't just one render calling function which does it all, but there are multiple and each of them is responsible for removing objects under certain criteria. One of those conditions for showing WMOs, which are the huge world map objects like the castle here, is that you have to be inside them, if rooms are defined to be interior. And now you can see the conflict of interest. The game wants to be a smart cookie and cut down on computations when rooms can't be seen during normal gameplay, but we are zooming around out of bounds, so we certainly aren't inside the room in order to show them. I can't list all the different culling methods of the client, because it would take too much time, and also I don't know them all. This was certainly the trickiest reversing task I have done so far, and it took an insane amount of dedication, time, and most of all, nerves. But in the end I think, the result doesn't look half bad. The key to repository I created to understand the 335A client will be released sometime in the future with a dedicated video. But before that happens, I wanna do some more adjustments and progress its completion. This concludes the first part of the video and I hope it was interesting. Stay tuned for more and zook zook.